Ukrainian mark the somber or third of Christmas in Bakhmut as shelling goes on. Ukrainians spend the Orthodox Christmas in the shelter after cease fire never materialized. Bakhmut, Ukraine, CNN. <coughs> the shelter was jammed with people on the eve of Orthodox Christmas. Some were trying to warm up around the wood stove after traveling in the fridge diesel. Others lined up for the cup of hot coffee and the biscuit. Under the Christmas tree lay a tingle, tangle of wires charging mobile phones. There has been no electricity, running water, or cell phone, cell phone service in Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine's Donbas region for months. This shelter with a generator, a wireless router connected to a satellite linked up, offers hot food and drinks, medicine, and equally important, volunteers with a sympathetic ear. It's an oasis of combat in a free crazy landscape of danger, destruction, and deprivation. Roughly 40 to 50 people were there when CNN visited. A local priest holds the Orthodox Christmas Day service in a church crypt under the Church of All Saints in Bakhmut. Tanya Shchelbak a volunteer in a bright green high visibility, <coughs> visibility vast, hostled, hostled about that Friday, stopping to speak to the elderly woman punching punchy over in front of a stop, coaxing a chunk of chocolate from another. Unfortunately, I'm not the sun and I can't illuminate the warm heat everywhere. I try to listen to them. I know many of their stories. I try my best to chair back for the CNN, but she can only do so much. She did manage to quack a broad smile from nine-year-old Vladimir, the only child in the shelter with the bright orange and green octopus she gave him after from a shelf of toys and games. The entire roof has already been blown off our house, he told Sienna with a matter-of-fact tone of voice you might expect from a war veteran. We have already had two hit. City volunteer Tatiana Shiberbach hands a toy to the only child in the shelter. He said he spent the evenings playing cards with his mother, Lydia Krilopa, like a 90% of the original inhabitants of Bakhmut who have left, according to head of Bakhmut City Military Administration. Krilopa and her family have stayed behind in the city, which has been at the center of fierce fighting between Ukrainian and Russian forces in recent months. Here is our home, our homeland, my parents, acquaintances, and friends, Klilopa said of her decision to stay. The volunteers have, have laid a table with small cakes, biscuits, apples, oranges, and candy. Between the dishes of food were small cardboard Christmas trees. People gathered around the table. We wish each of you salvation and peace. Spar back for the death. We want to give you a bit of warm and comfort. We wish you a Merry Christmas as best you can. We can please come and treat yourself. A brief commotion a, a brief commotion follows as everyone grabbed what they could. With less than a minute the table was empty. A senior citizen sitting at one of the Bakhmut city shelters to receive a warm and hot drinks. Andrei Haryak watched it all from in front of the stove, a veteran cameraman for the local television company who is now retired. He recalled the happier Christmases past. 
This is so sad, he said. Sad, sad day. As the day progressed, the temperatures dropped below freezing. Heavy snow, snow flakes fell from the leaden sky. And all, of, all the while, the thought of outgoing and incoming artillery and rockets and intermittent hollow rattle of small arms fire could be heard. Barely a soul ventured out. We came across the shepherd, shepherd held, holding his flock through a park. His face hooded against the cold. He stood, stood, stup, stupid, up, stupid to pick up chestnuts from the snowy ground. Further down the road, the soldier, soldiers scrambled between buildings with a crate of ammunition. The shelling went on. Russian pre President Vladimir Putin last week proposed a 36-hour truce over Orthodox Christmas, but a uni unilateral move was dismissed by Kiev as hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Ukrainian officials said a string of Russian missiles were fired during that period. As darkness gathered Friday, the CNN crew found cover in a basement where Three of the last seven doctors still in Bakhmut were preparing their Orthodox Christmas Eve dinner. They moved down here they month, there a month ago, as bomb shelters were all basement go. Theirs is surprisingly comfortable. Each end of the basement is partitioned off to make separate the bedrooms. A generator provides a power and the wood stove warmth. They set up a Christmas tree in a corner, complete with the color, the light. Tarpaulins, tarpaulins from the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, covered the cold concrete walls. Elena Borchanova, a specialist in infectious diseases on the left, and the neurosurgeon Elena Manu Kina on the right, two of the remaining seven doctors, seven doctors in Bakhmut, posting over Christmas dinner. Neurosurgeon Elena Manu Kina has set, has seen up close the toll the war raising around the Bakhmut has taken. It has changed a lot in the people here. We, they are worried. They are rethinking their lives. The, the war has caused a change in the people's. Uh, psyche and health, he, she told the CNN. We joined the doctors for dinner. They toasted the holiday with the Ukrainian company and the fiery cognac. But the mood was subdued. Elena Morchanova, a specialist in infectious diseases, was the most eminated at the table, trying to raise the speech. But even she flagged, I feel pain, she said, her eyes um, misting up, because I can't be with my family. I can't sit at the same table with my mother and daughter. The CNN crew spent the night in a separate room in the basement. The doctors provided us with a tarp to cover the concrete floor, mattresses and firewood for a stove in the corner throughout the long night, shelling rumbled in the distance. Then Orthodox Christmas dawned in Bakhmut with clear blue skies and bone-chilling cold, and the bombardment